is it possible that a species of pre-humans were living outside of Africa? And when I say pre-humans, I mean around six million years ago, that they were part of the very, very first out of Africa migration, who most likely migrated back into Africa after the climate changed. Well, the answer to both these questions is most likely yes. And this species is known as Aurorin tugenensis. They probably lived on or traveled through the Greek island of Crete in the Mediterranean Sea, which wasn't an island back then, some, you know, six million years ago. It was actually connected to mainland Greece and Europe. Before I go into all of this, I would like to quickly mention that this video is kindly sponsored by History Hit, but as always, more on the sponsor later in the video. And yeah, we still have Kat. She's probably going to be here in nearly every video from now on. My name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to tell you everything there is to know about Aurorin tugenensis and give you some quick information on the discovered footprints at Trachylos on the island of Crete in Greece, while pointing you to an interview I conducted last year with Professor Per Alberg about these footprints. So one thing that's quite unclear in the human evolutionary timeline is who the first bipedal species is. It could be Sahelanthropus chadensis, or it could be Aurorin tugenensis. Some people feel like Sahelanthropus shouldn't be considered to be a bipedal species because it was too ape-like from the fossils that we have discovered so far. I have created a video on the probability of Sahelanthropus being a bipedal species quite recently, actually, as it was part of a new discovery, but it wasn't completely accepted in the anthropological community. So yeah, link to that in the upper right corner and in the description down below. The femur of Sahelanthropus might show evidence for bipedalism, but anthropologists aren't all agreeing on this. So there is an actual chance that the slightly younger Aurorentugenensis is the oldest bipedal species, as there is evidence of them being bipedal and they're not much younger than Sahelanthropus chadensis. So for the sake of this particular video, I'm going to look into Aurora tugenensis as the oldest bipedal species, as they are the oldest to have been confirmed as bipedal, or at least accepted by the anthropological community to be bipedal. There still are some people that contest this, but you know, that's science. But before I'm going to look into the pre-human species of Aurora tugenensis, I would like to dedicate a moment to thank today's sponsor, History Hit. Immerse yourself into new historical topics through History Hit. History Hit brings you the stories that shape the world through their award-winning podcast network and online history channel. It's just like Netflix, but all history. You can watch hundreds of hours of original history documentaries with expert historians such as Dan Snow, Professor Suzanne Lipscomb, Dan Jones, and more. Enjoy their fantastic content anytime and anywhere, regardless of the device, with two new documentaries uploaded every single week, plus 19 episodes across eight podcasts, which includes the world's leading history podcast, Dan Snow's History Hit. Sign up for this astounding history channel as it exemplifies the great traditions of documentary filmmaking and watch their amazing documentary, Digging Up the Dark Ages, showing a remarkable story of a little understood period of our history 1500 years ago. So click the link in the description down below to start your journey today and get 50% off of your next three months using code HISTORYWITHKAYLEE at checkout. But now it's time to look into the species of Aurora tugenensis, how long ago they emerged, where they emerged, the fossils that we have found, and their morphology. And of course, I'm going to take a quick look into the discovered footprints on the island of Crete that were most likely left by Aurora tugenensis. So first, as per usual, let's start at the location where Aurora tugenensis lived. So the first fossils of this species were discovered in 2000 by a team led by Brigitte Zenut and Martin Pickford from the French National Museum of Natural History. 
And as of 2007, a total of 20 fossil fragments from five individuals have been discovered in the Tugan Hills at the Lukaino Formation in Kenya. The oldest of these fossils date back to approximately 6.1 million years ago, and they were found at Sheboit and Aragai. And the fossils found in Kapsomin and Kapcheberek date back to approximately 5.7 million years ago. So as we have seen many times now in previous videos that I created on this channel, East Africa, together with South Africa, are the birthplaces for the entire Homo genus. And not only that, but even our pre-human ancestors evolved in that area. The name of the genus Ororen means original man in the Tugan language. And the species name, Tugenensis, comes from the location where the fossils were found, the Tugan Hills. So the fossils that were discovered were a part of a mandible in two pieces, a cartilaginous joint, several teeth, three femur fragments, a partial humerus and two phalanges. So let's look into the morphology of Aurorin tugenensis and how the morphology of this species differs from the Australopithecine species, the Ardipithecus species and us modern humans. Of course, as you, the viewer, can imagine, with only a very small sample size of fossil fragments, it's quite hard to determine the morphology and the key features of a species. It's completely impossible to determine the brain size, the cranial shape, the body size and shape when there is a lack of cranial fossils and besides the femur and the humerus, we don't have much fossils from the body to determine its shape. So the brain is most likely, most likely, most likely similar to that of a modern chimpanzee in size. But like I just explained, it is impossible to know this information for certain. We will never know unless we find a cranium. Go find me a head of Aurorum tugenensis, thanks. The teeth were relatively small compared to the size of the bones that were found from the body. And the teeth seem to have thicker enamel than the Ardipithecus and Australopithecine species. The canines were ape-like, but smaller, resembling the canines of modern-day chimpanzees. So the body size and shape are also thought to be similar to modern-day chimpanzees. But again, this is uncertain. We don't know. We've only found partial fragments, and one humerus doesn't really tell us about the entire body size. We know more about the limbs than anything else when it comes to the morphology of Aurora tugenensis. The humerus and the phalanges, or you know, the upper arm bone and curved finger bones suggest that Aurora tugenensis was still very adapted to climbing trees, and they probably did that often. Although there's one thing, that the thumb bone of Aurorantugenensis is actually of human proportions and has been suggested to have been associated with tool making, although still very suitable for the grasping abilities needed for tree climbing. But there are features in the femur, or you know, the leg bone, that suggest that Aurorantugenensis was bipedal. It may differ quite a bit with the femurs of us modern humans and other human species that lived before us, you know. This species is way older, so that's not very strange, but it does closely resemble the femur of Australopithecines that lived three to four million years ago, who we know for certain to have been bipedal. So in October of 2021, a paper was published in Nature about footprints that were discovered at Trachylos on the island of Crete in Greece. I actually interviewed the coordinating author of this paper on my channel, Professor Per Alberg, from the Uppsala University in Sweden. I will put a link to that video in the upper right corner and in the description down below. So, in that video, we spoke about how old these discovered footprints were, the area of Crete and what that looked like some six million years ago. We looked into how the footprints were analyzed, we looked into his opinion on the pre-human footprints and which species that may have left them. And we spoke about how these individuals may have reached the European coast and how they might have made their way back into Africa afterwards. 
To be completely honest with you, uh, this was actually one of my favorite videos that I made on the channel. Professor Alberg is such a lovely person with a vast wealth of knowledge. And I've actually, since that interview, had the pleasure of meeting him in person, which I did last year in December when I traveled to Sweden to visit my sister, who works at the same university. So yeah, that was really cool. Sat with him in his office for about three hours talking about ancient history and pre-human species. That was really cool. I personally am of the opinion that about six million years ago, around the same time that Aurorum tugenensis emerged, the climate was suitable for them to cover a bigger area. And they most likely spread out of Africa due to the climate being better for them in the north, into, you know, southern Europe. They probably made their way through the Levant area. So it seems that for a while, the climate was just right for them to occupy the shores of southern Europe around the nowadays island of Crete, which back then, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, was still connected to mainland Greece and Europe for that matter. While they occupied the European southern shore, the circumstances were just perfect for their footprints to become fossilized on the shore at Trachelos in Crete. And these footprints are now the oldest evidence of human occupation in the entire world. The oldest pre-human footprints ever discovered are located at Trachylos in Crete, in the country of Greece. These footprints are six million years old. That's nearly three million years older than the footprints found at La Toli in Tanzania, which were believed to be the oldest pre-human footprints until this discovery. Of course, still many anthropologists and people in the field don't accept the Trachylos footprints, but I do, because I talked with this professor about them and I absolutely believe him wholeheartedly. Actually, there is a very slight chance that Aurorum tugenensis might even be a direct human ancestor. Although, as you can imagine, anthropologists aren't all on the same page when it comes to this suggestion. There are anthropologists that are of the belief that Australopithecus afarensis better known as the species where Lucy was a part of, may have to be considered to be a side branch of the hominin family tree. But Aurorin is approximately 3 million years older and more similar to modern humans in certain regards than Australopithecus afarensis, which is something that I didn't expect, which is really cool. The main similarity between Aurorin and us modern humans lies in the femur as this is morphologically closer to us than it is to Australopithecus afarensis. Although there is a debate surrounding this because the femur of Aurorin most likely belongs to a male, while the femur of Lucy, of course, as the name suggests, belongs to a female. And it could be that they differ more because they are of two different genders. Although I personally think that this is a bit strange. I don't believe the difference would be that big between the two genders. I mean, a modern human Homo sapiens sapiens femur of a woman is still very similar to, you know, a Homo sapiens sapiens femur of a male. Most recent studies suggest that Aurorum tugenensis adapted to an early form of bipedalism. It does show that bipedalism evolved at least six million years ago. Bipedalism developed very early in the hominin clade and evolved very successfully over the course of the human evolutionary timeline. And by golly, am I happy that it did, because I wouldn't want to be walking on all fours or climbing trees all day long. I like walking upright. I hope that more Aurorum tugenensis fossils will be discovered in the upcoming decades. I would love to expand our knowledge and my own personal knowledge on this species and their importance on the evolution of bipedalism. So yeah, I mean, they are quite enigmatic and most likely the very first actual bipedal species that we have confirmed. So yeah, Aurorum tugenensis. But with that said, you have reached the end of this video, but I would like to quickly remind you of the history hit link in the description down below to start your journey today and get 50% off of your next three months using code history with Kaylee at checkout. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up 
subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below. They go straight to my playlists and yeah, you can watch an entire playlist in a day. I don't suggest you do it, but you know, maybe I do. You can also click a video in the end card, which is set to best for viewers. So YouTube caters to you and what it is that you want to see. I would like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me and always being here with me. And if you are considering supporting me, then maybe become a channel member or a patron. But yeah, with that said, you have reached the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.